Hey, Carol Duke, what is that fantastic picture that you're showing as an image? And that's a village in Italy. Oh, is that, is that the one that you went, uh, you were visiting at? I'm there a lot, yes. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can... Great. And Nina, is that the Aurora Borealis behind you? <laughs> yes. I'm up in Alaska. Are you in Alaska? I didn't. Wait a minute. This quick trip, because I saw you walking down the street earlier today. <laughs> Maybe it's Norway. It's one of those. Okay. Where are you, Bill? Where am I? I'm sitting in my office, but on the behind me, over my shoulder up there, is a uh, a uh, uh, litho of the smallest mountain range in the world. It's known as the Sutter Buttes, located uh, just to the northwest of Sacramento. And in front of it is the farming country and that stuff in the Sutter Basin uh, area, which is where we have our farming uh, properties and operations. And you're on mute. It's also an extinct volcano. Well, that probably explains why it's there. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is it's mostly known for jackrabbits and rattlesnakes. Uh, <laughs> it's mostly private land. It's quite interesting, actually. Yeah. Isn't Governor Brown's ranch up there? Jerry Brown's ranch? Sometimes I stumble into how to get my picture on there. Can somebody help me? Are you on an iPad or what? Laptop. A laptop? Uh, I can see me, but the rest of you can't. In, in, the bottom, in the bottom left corner, you should see an icon that says mute and then start video. Yeah. Hit start video. There you yeah. go. Hey. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just eating peanuts. Oh, okay. I've got cashews too. 
Are you going to share? Come on over. <laughs> Sorry, just reach, th reach through the screen. Golly. I, I get so like caught up in whatever I'm doing at the moment. It's a little ridiculous. I really apologize for being late. Um, I better get. Hi, Nicole. How's your first week? Well, I guess it's been more than a week now, but still. I think I, I think I got officially two weeks down Ooh. my third week now and things are going great. Yeah, I love it. Oh, that's what we want to hear. I feel like Nepenthe and I are just a perfect match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. Um, can you share the um, agenda, Nicole? Yes, of course. Let me pull that up here. It's so my first one of these. So you guys are going to have to bear with me with uh, expectations and and all of that. Let me... No worries. <laughs> Let me put up the agenda. I got your final version right here. Okay. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Oop. I need one. I need to go. And then the screen. There we go. Okay. Can everyone see that okay? Ooh, it's teeny. Ooh, is it teeny? Let's go like this. Well, it's teeny for me. I don't know about you. Yeah, that's great. That's How about that? Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, lovely. All right. I will, I'll scroll as we go down the agenda. Okay. Um, there aren't too many homeowners on the call, but anything, anybody, any questions or comments from anyone before we get going? Okay. Um, well, let's start off with the interesting stuff, uh, the updates or briefing about your meeting with um, Bob Browning on Friday, Bill and Will. Well, uh, I included uh, the nice little outline you sent to be able to cue you on what you needed to tell us about. <laughs> well, First of all, this was, I put, keep, you know, keep us kind of on track and, and that discussion, I, I put this together as a discussion guide, not as an agenda, but just to focus us in on the, what we've talked about both within the committee and, and outside the committee is, you know, to talk through, you know, the direction uh, for the 2024 reserve study. And we met with Bob. It was uh, all the directors plus Will uh, on behalf of uh, the uh, finance committee. And uh, the first thing we did is we talked about, you know, a little bit about you know, last year. Last year was last year. What worked well? What could we have done better? And what do we need to focus on as we go into 2024, which is a, a you know, site on site review process and updating of the reserve study, which is different than, you know, what we did last year or the prior year. So, uh, you know, that, that was good. We talked about the timing. They'll start the, uh, well, why don't you uh, just talk a little bit about the things that you mentioned about just kind of go through each one instead of, you know, like, what did you say about how you thought, you might improve the process. Well, what we, you know, last year, the uh, with regard to the process, uh, we, you know, on our side, uh, it was, you know, our first, ex my first experience as well as uh, Dusty's first experience, and we had Andy involved in the reserve study, and it was really crunched in a time frame, and it was also uh, Bob was. Uh, had some uh, familiar fa family issues, which really didn't, you know, lend itself to, if you will, a well-processed uh, exchange of information. 
And, and that was made it a little bit more stressful. And we said, we need, we need to avoid that and we need to focus on how we can do things better. Um, That's it. That said, um, you know, with, you know, this year, as we focus the focal point or our point person with the reserve study will be Nicole. And Nicole has, you know, great experience with working with reserves and reserve studies. So I think it'll go a lot smoother. We'll have good interface with the uh, on-site team and communicate and better communications between what I'll use the word Depente management and Browning's analysts. Um, Bill, Can you just tell us a little bit more about those, um, what the poor exchange of inf information was. I remember you saying something about inaccuracies um, regarding the reserve ex expenses at the end of the year or something like that, or was that, or, or the information that was given to Browning wasn't updated? Well, yeah, it was, that was in the, in the information provided to Browning get my notes here um, with regard to the reserve study. If you looked at, let me grab, grab that, hold on. All right, bear with me. Just a note that um, the source of some of that problem was the transition loss of manager and then the hiring new manager, inexperienced manager, et cetera. So that happened to hit at just a key yeah. moment. Yeah. And going back to your question, Susan, uh, when you look at page uh, 37 of, the re of last year's reserve study, which is the cash flow, and you look at 2023, it showed uh, expenditures for 2023 at 1979000 and change. Uh, that was about where we were in August. It didn't pick up. The expected ex expenditures carried through the year. It was not reflective of what the forecast expenditures were for 2023. Which was some three million seven hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. So clearly, what that did is resulted. Three hundred. Say that again. What the um act, the actual three hundred and six three million seven hundred sixty-five thousand. Yeah. Okay. So you had just just you know a little difference there. Yeah. And of course, as you carry down carries through to the ending balance and overstates the ending balance as it was published in the reserve study at 11,543,000 and with the expend with expenditures more reflective of what reality was and what should have been picked up as forecast expenditures uh, the ending balance would have been 9,759,000 so just a little bit of a difference there. Now, the reality is we began the year of 2023 with 11,113,000. ,113 we had expenditures of 3,903,000. We had reserve contributions of 3,170,000, which included insurance and prior year uh, carry forward. And uh, interest earnings of 524000 So we ended the year at 10905000 ahead of what the calculator was. But the key thing that I picked up, and it was driven by Nina's question last week, last month, is why is there a difference? And that, brought, that troubled me, and I'm glad that she brought that question up, because there was a difference. And now we understand why. Now, why why did why was it a million nine hundred seventy nine thousand? It was a mistake. 
I went back and I looked and we had, who were the players that were playing in that? We had Dusty, we had Andy, we had myself, we had Bob Browning. It was a mistake. Well, I think the difference Nina was mentioning was like 600 and something thousand, as I recall, but um, I'm sure that this this probably played into that. Um, okay, good to know. Thank you for that explanation. Anybody have any other questions about that or should we move on to the site visit plan? I just, <clears throat> I just got one comment. Uh, whenever you're doing anything, and you come to various points along the way. You need to step back. Everybody does. You need to step back and say, does this make sense? You got a mis mistake there, Bill, but it didn't, someplace in the process of getting there, it didn't make sense. So let's look for that uh, question as we go along in the future. Does it make sense? Thank you. Well, Don, you know, thank you. You know, that's a great, a great point. And I respect that. And I appreciate that, uh, that comment. And, you know, the, uh, I'll take that into consideration as we go forward. Thank you. Okay. So now down to the site the plan. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Site does it. We'll, we'll start that, what, uh, Nicole, I think, what, mid-March, first part of April, with uh, some of their staff uh, being on site. They're going to be looking at, you know, everything, you know, in, in the Penthe that's in the reserve study, updating the reserve study, uh, looking at condition of, of uh, our facilities and, and uh, grounds uh, and that. And, you know, bringing up to date uh, calculations as to estimations of what the remaining useful lives are and what the condition is. So we can expect probably the first draft, uh, what their conclusions are, you know, May, late May, early June, which is good because that fits right into the time for us to review. Uh, their conclusions and recommendations and carries into the budget process. I wonder um, if it might be, I mean, they're going to go through the entire reserve study for um, everybody that, that hasn't really looked closely at that document at every asset we have. And um, you'll see when you go through the last reserve study um, the sections describing each of those assets. And there's, there are comments about things that happened 20 years ago, uh, 15 years ago. It's kind of a running document about everything connected with those assets. And it, it strikes me that it might be a really good idea if we kind of split up responsibility for kind of paying attention to different assets just so that we can be helpful eyes in this process because there's a an enormous amount of information and we can't all well we could read the whole thing all of us but um it, it's a it's a heavy lift so I, I guess i i would just suggest that everybody take a look at that reserve study and then maybe next month we can we can talk about um, how it makes sense to kind of divide up responsibility for different parts if, if if that's a workable plan. Just want to throw that out there as a kind of and and we can talk, Bill, you probably have thought a little bit more about how the finance committee can can be helpful, but um, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Well, without without question, and I think that uh, you know first thing as we look at uh, the, this reserve study, as I said, the, the you know, uh, our management, Nicole is is is, is going to be, you know, our lead person, and I think that we need to, you know, we'll coordinate with her, and I, clearly we want to utilize the resources 
of the Finance Committee to, to look at this and ask questions in areas that we're familiar with or maybe even not familiar with, because if you're not familiar with a particular area, you could probably be more objective and ask better questions. Well, I think one time when we went through this process, I had responsibility for paving and um, let it be said that I know nothing about paving, but I learned a lot. So uh -huh. um, yeah, and, and maybe Nicole will, you can talk to Nicole or I can, we can all kind of talk together about what. what yeah, I, I, th I think we can sit down and, and figure out the best way to utilize the resources and talent that we have. Okay. And um, then the fine, sorry, the final deliverable is I cut you off in the middle of that. No, the final deliverable would be as we're at the time that we're working through the budget process. And Nicole, about what 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 time frame was that? Around August. Mm -hmm. hey, Susan, I don't have any drafts we have to go through. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, while we're on this phase although it would fit under siding also. Um, Browning was unaware that uh, our consultant and our current contractor have gone through phase two and done a really in-depth, much more in-depth than he normally does, uh, examination of uh, the need for work to the point of, you know, going up on ladders, punching holes and things and so on. Um, so I think he, it's pretty clear he's going to utilize their information, which will be probably superior to anything his crew would get, uh, because his biggest miss last time was on siding costs. Uh, the other thing I'll, uh, I might as well throw out while I'm at this, especially for Nina, is that we discovered an interesting piece of information. When Browning got the contract, he counted, they counted every sheet of siding in the Pente. Did they count it by model number? No, they didn't count it by model number. They just counted total number of sheets. And, you know, some of those are half sheets, some of those are quarter sheets. But as I remember, the number is around 33,000 uh, sheets. So uh, it once we get the, uh, you know, if you get a, a figure of, of what percentage of total sheets you're replacing over a large number of units, it tells us basically that, you know, uh, at the end, and I think we're running a third or more. So at the end of this project, we should have replaced a, in excess of 10,000 sheets. Well, how did Browning count? You didn't need to ask a question of uh, one way of counting, but uh, you said he counted. How did he count? They they walked around and counted sheets. Uh, and as far as I can ascertain, they did not they did not subdivide those sheets by unit or uh, you know half sheets, whole sheets. They just counted sheets. Well, they must have probably done that, but they didn't share that information. Well, you know, have, you, have you guys have you guys started counting and are you still doing that? Well, I have an update on that. It's a Ooh. good time for me to give it, I guess. Sure. Um, I have um, all of zone four ready to go um, in terms of um, the addresses and um, the number of, uh, you know, number of sheets per that model. Um I did discover in this area that some things are a short, um, a single story attached to a two story, Susan, similar to your house is. Um, and that will be a half of a thing. So I have to repair that in terms of the number of sheets. I don't think we counted it, but um, I have it ready to go. And there's a few little things I have to do. And I have, we, there's three models that have, there's three new models in zone four. And those, um, uh, there's a 5,000 and I can't remember the other one. And then the clubhouse is there. So that'll count. I'm assuming they'll do the clubhouse, the little Dunbarton clubhouse while we're going through that area. So it's pretty ready to go. I have to polish a few things on it, but, um, you know, 
we can still have, we can still do it. We can still go all the way through. Al and I can count the other couple of houses and um, we can keep a detail by model number is how we've done it now and see how close we come in the end. <laughs> yeah, I, th I mean, I think that's great. I always like to have- um... Well, it's a good gut check, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's it's another source of data that gives you a, another validation point. That's all. Yeah. But, you know, you'll get a, a lot better sense of um, how much it, it is per house by address. We will have it by address. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, that so it's, it's be, just about ready to go. And if we want to continue that, we can ask... Um, Paul to give us the next set that he's done up until now from the last point and I can start plugging them in and I'll make the uh, adjustments on the other things I have to check as I go. I mean, the other interesting thing about that is that, um, you know, we have all the information about how many sheets have been replaced by address also. Yeah. So we can kind of track the areas that tend to, you know, need the most replacements. And I think, you know, you should be able, not you personally, but we yeah. should be able to do more accurate projections about costs in the future. Too. Well, it would help you in the future because you'll know exactly what you've replaced and where. Yeah. You know, have a resource. But when we're all done. We need, we need to memorialize this whole thing with how many sheets were replaced per, you know, per, per address because the next time we go through this cycle, mm -hmm. uh, you know, none of us will probably be involved in all probability or- Come on, eight years? Very good chance that none of us will be involved. So at that point, somebody is gonna have to have something they can find to go back and say, okay, what was the result? You know, this is what, uh, what was done last time. How many of those? Uh, how many of those sheets have remained? Uh, uh, how many of those places have had to have multiple sheets replaced, and so on? Um, well, we do have that already for the part that we've done up until now. We have documented each house that was done until the phase where we ended. It was right before my own house, so I, you know, have that documented as well. But we have per house how many sheets per model, and how many sheets that were replaced per house, uh, per model by address. We have it every, every bit of that. The important right. thing is we put it in some kind of a document people can find in 12 yeah. years. Yeah, because well, we it's in an it. Excel spreadsheet, so. Yeah, we could have it and it could get lost. We need to have it in hard copy and labeled somewhere that- uh, Yeah, that's possible. That people we we just need to out. have it on a secure server. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the problem is you don't have any idea what so, what software you're going to be using in 12 years. That's turned out to be a problem uh, for a lot well, of folks. It's eight years, right? Yeah. And right now, they've got a 12-year cycle. Okay. Right. And, uh, it, well, I think it, probably having an Excel file that we keep track of will be, that's pretty safe. You know, uh, I can yeah, still I would, open I would do. I would do both because... Sure, it's fine. Get forgotten and, and pushed aside over, over time. You know, you're liable to have a new manager and new people on the finance committee and new people on the board. And yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, th I think that uh, many times one of the things that the, the work that we're doing here and, and data that we're collecting is going to have, you know, value in the future. And we should, of course, we, we collect that. But I think it'd be also beneficial to for us to make it a, and share it with uh, Browning, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that they 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 can see and you know cross check, and you know we can ask questions and see if okay if there's differences, you know let's we can find out and understand what those differences might, what the causes might be. Yeah, one way to memorialize it is for Browning to put it in the reserve study. Or attach it as an addendum or something. Well, once we share it with him, we can talk to him about what the best way to keep that information. Yep. Currently, it's on my desktop. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Okay. Um, should we move on to? Uh... I did have one thing to say, Susan. Oh, you you had sure. an idea about on the reserve study how we could all take a piece of that. I think one of the things going forward in the future is also to watch the invoices every month, whichever category you're assigning to watch in the Browning report to see how we're matching it. It's not, you know, if you split it up, there's not that many invoices a month. Just a okay. thought. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can, I mean, when we get down to talking about nitty gritty stuff, um, Write down that idea, Nina, so we have it again. I mean, I just wrote it down, but you know, it helps to have more than one person. Bill, do you wanna carry us forward? Okay. Uh, the, uh, re regarding siting, we did talk about uh, you know the the product we're using today, uh, and then and its anticipated life uh, versus the T one hundred and eleven, and they will take that into consideration. But it was clearly, uh, you know, came through clearly in uh, that um, there's you know no real uh, Browning did not do an analysis uh, of the product. It was a board decision. And I think Will, you you commented on that previously, so we'll go from there. Uh, with regard to the extending the uh, siting cycle from six to twelve years, right now it is in the reserve study at twelve years. Bill, 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 yes. let me let me take exception to what you just said or add to it. The comments I made at the board meeting, I do think that the decision such as this and the work that Browning was doing, it should have been required of Browning to put something in writing to us. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, f let's focus forward and you. Know, well, uh, we got to look at history to learn from this. Thank you. Very good. Uh, presently, we, we are looking at a, a 12 year cycle on the, uh, on the siding and that uh, we talked about the painting cycle, uh, making sure that the painting Paint uh, sinks with the with the uh, uh, siding. Now, paints at uh, six six years versus eight years with with a maintenance process in that where there would be you know uh, touch up and siding uh, repairs as necessary uh, during that. We also mm -hmm. talked about tennis supports and resealing. We talked about uh, landscape. Uh, you know how we need to bring in the turf irrigation. Uh, changes uh, as a result of AB 1572, which is wide open. We also talked about uh, funding thresholds. But it was a good open discussion and dialogue. Can and you I just think back that, up a, a teeny bit um, and, and give us a little bit more just information about the tennis courts? I think you you, you mentioned about the... Well, we talked about... Uh, oh, oh, and, and the same true is true with siding, right? We're going to do cycle repairs is needed yeah um the yeah. tennis courts was decided there well we talked about uh, the need for i'm going to refer to them as as i call them it may be another we have the elmhurst courts and there's really nothing we can do there with it without exception of rehabilitation of those so you know maintenance and, and that for those courts is effectively uh we discussed you know for probably, you know, seriously deferring anything there. Uh, as to the commons courts, um, you know, just normal maintenance, but we there's not a heavy utilization of those. So we might be able to defer, uh, you know, uh, some of the expenses for uh, maintenance on those courts. The main courts, uh, you know, those will be picked up in the reserve study uh, appropriately. Okay. And um, landscape. Did they, to... did they talk about the uh, the AB fifteen seventy two issues? We did, and you know, 
there, there's a lot of noise on that. And it's, you know, at this point, we just said we need to be attentive to it. We don't have a solution. He doesn't have solutions. He's got other associations that, that have similar challenges. So it would be interesting to see where it takes us. Is it, is it the thought that the um, consultants that we've we've engaged will help with the projecting costs and things for the water use? And will they, I mean, I know they're helping us negotiate with the, with the city on um, kind of converting the billing, right? Is there, do they have any other expertise in the whole water use? I, they, they may have, but we have not engaged them for that purpose. Gotcha. Okay. So this is still a little bit. It's, oh yeah. It, it's, there, there's a, a, a lot of stuff there that we don't know. And well, so budget wise, which is our main concern, reserve study wise, is what's the thought about how to incorporate any kind of fiscal impacts of, of this? I don't think there's any rational way to do it. You've got too many unknowns. Number one, we don't have a non-potable source of water. Uh, so, you know, as to what the solution would be, uh, it's an interest, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult question. Well, it's only we, grass that's affected. So there could be a conversion to, well, I want to say some kind of ground cover, for example. There, and, and I think, you know, small areas, that's true, but we've got two large green zones. Now it's grass, it's not utilized for some other purpose. So there's probably, you know, some ways we could put our mind to it and, uh, by putting uh, maybe a jungle gym and a set of swings in the middle of the uh, the green zone, it becomes a park. Uh, well, you know, you can ball. get some uh, money from the city and you do get credit for how many trees you have for shade. There's all these, uh, I did look into it briefly. I called the city on it. And, you know, there is a credit for your the trees that you have because that takes away from the water evaporation. So, I mean, there's a lot to it. And, uh, you know, this yeah, well, is probably we've the meeting. we but... thousands of dollars from the city, you know, in our irrigation project and, and rebates. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think we had two $30,000 grants. More than that. Yeah. Well, but well, I, I, I think it, it, it's, you know, just from our own discussion and, you know, the great research that you've done. Uh, you know, AB 1572, uh, it, you know, what we do in the direction that we go today has yet to be determined. And that's probably a part of the process that we have to look at. And that's that's not just the reserve say, but that's also, you know, looking at the grounds committee and, and having some discussions there and looking at what the, those alternatives are. And I will share that back with the board that we need to, we need to develop a, a, an action plan to figure out what to do. Well, uh, the suffice city it has to resources say, for that to help. That's and I think that that's that's exactly great. And, uh, you know, we'll make note of that. And with, as 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 we move forward today, we don't have that, but that's good knowledge to have. And we and I know that management as well as committees will work to come up with a good solution for us. Well, and I'm sure I, I just want to say, I'm sure you're right. And that's fine. And I'm really mostly just concerned about the implications for, for reserve budget and, you know, and how we're going to account for the fact that we're going to need to spend one way or another. Um, and, you know, if it's not right, if it's not right now for this reserve study, then it's not, but it would be nice to kind of have something built into the future, even if it's a, a kind of a vague, we ought to put some money aside to dig a well, to put a jungle gym or whatever it is. It's so, they're going to have a financial. Oh, go ahead, Tara. Oh, that was Nina. Oh, but Nina. Nonetheless, um, Bill, you might um, ask your water consultant people um, that you're working with to convert our billing. Because right now our water isn't separable. For example, if I have a water leak at my house, nobody knows it's at my house. It's leaking from the system in, as a whole. So I'm not sure how you separate out 
uh, landscape from um, um, anything else in terms of how our water billing is done. And so that may be just enough that ours isn't separable that way, that we get some kind of a excuse, if you will, not to do this. And so I guess that would be a question to ask those consultants about it. There, that's a good, great suggestion. There's currently lobbying going on, you know, uh, about this whole thing. I mean, we are not the sole association that this is hitting, sure. hitting yeah. numerous associations and that are in similar situation to ours. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the critical point for us is that we don't have a separate, a whole separate water system. It was never built to be a separate water system. Well, and their metering that they put in is clearly not meant to be separated. Yeah. But, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. it's just a thought. Well, absolutely. These are all great suggestions. And I know that uh, Nicole is making note of them. So, uh, and we'll, you know, do we will do our darndest to get all these great thoughts uh, into uh, uh, the reserve study and uh, forward thinking is in our management. So with that, uh, moving, uh, that's pretty much sums up the, the Browning meeting and uh, comments that we have. And then is there any news on the water billing? Nicole, can you give us an update on the water billing process? Yeah, so I just heard back from the representative over at Wood Rogers. He's the that's the company that's helping us with that conversion. Um, he recently reached reached out to the city of Sacramento to obtain all the accurate um, meter readings, and he's compiling all that data right now. Um, so stay tuned. So no major movements. He's just getting data right now. Okay. Well, that's progress. It is. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Compared to the data that we've had, that'll be wonderful. It's, it's, I'm actually kind of glad nothing really has happened yet because to come into a project midway um, would mm -hmm. kind of be awful. So I'm kind of glad we're where we're at right now. So I'm kind of starting somewhat still in the beginning. So, <laughs> Nicole, what's the name of that? The company again? Wood, Wood, Wood Rogers. Wood Rogers. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay, moving on to old business. I wanted to talk uh, us to talk a little bit about um, reserve study goals and talk about um, the fact that we use the threshold goal model and and why we decided to do that and um, talk about the implications for percent funded. I know, Don, you have a lot of strong feelings about this, and I want to bring it up to end Nina, you too. I want to bring it up here so that we can talk about it and you can kind of articulate your feelings and we can talk about how we decided to move towards the threshold goals and, um, uh, and mostly it was to save us money um, on our HOA dues. And um, so I th I'm trying to think back. Will, you probably remember better than I do exactly when we decided to do the th threshold goals. It was probably, I don't know, eight years ago, seven years ago, something like that. And... Um, it was in that it was that period when I was off the board for a year and didn't think I was coming back uh, that they made that decision. And that was I'm trying to remember about six or seven years ago, at least um, the board made the decision to go to a threshold uh, versus you know, um, percent funded model. And and we talked about it in the finance committee meeting a lot, and we made that recommendation to the board. I think we we were meeting with Browning and seeing the amount that we were having to contribute to the reserve funds, just climbing exponent. I mean, you know, three percent every year is um, is kind of exponential uh, rise, and. Um, 
we talked to him about ways that we could control this the, the reserve contributions a little more, a little better. And um, he talked about threshold funds and, you know, said that the main thing is that we have enough money in the reserve, in the reserves to cover expenses, all our expenses with a cushion in case anything else happened um, at in during the years where the, the greatest expenses were anticipated. And um, it was his opinion that a cushion of $5 million would be sufficient to protect us from any kind of um, unforeseen expenses. And mind you, this doesn't mean that we weren't changing the amount that we were contributing every year. Every year he takes a look at what our expenses are and calculates out to that highest expense year, which you know, I'm making this up, but say it's something like 2030. It's out there, not too far from now, but it's, you know, far enough so that we have a little bit of leeway in, in the contribution amount that we set. And so that's why we did that, knowing that um, it would affect percent funded, but also putting us in the, in the, in a place where we weren't, you know, spending a thousand dollars a month on HOA dues, you know, and this is five or six years ago. So my, my, I'm, I'm telling you this, just as this is how this decision-making kind of came forward and knowing that I think Don and Nina too, although I, I'm just guessing that I think part of your thoughts are not so much, um, the need to raise the contribution and therefore the HOA dues, but to cut expenses in some way that will bring the percent funded up um, and, you know, not, and result in not really increasing dramatically our, our HOA dues. Am I, I so. pretty much right in, in saying that? I guess I've got two pieces there. One, I need to understand the threshold funding what that is, how it works. Uh, the other thing is that uh, when we run into uh, situations uh, as we have in the last year plus, uh, one was the storm damage. And uh, really the uh, what that cost us should have been uh, absorbable, let me use that word. The biggest thing is the uh, overrun on the expect, expected uh, Siding and painting costs, siding, fencing, painting. Uh, that once we get into a bucket like that, and uh, that we have to make decisions, and that's where I put the question to the board uh, or the suggestion, and uh, that uh, we got into phase one, and uh, yeah, you know, we pulled the trigger and we got you know, it and it's done. We're we're finishing phase one, but we haven't pulled the trigger on phase two yet. We've got a lot invested in. It. But how do we manage that budget to manage the percent funded? What is our primary goal? Is it to, to manage that percent funded to a reasonable level? And to me, third forty some percent going down to thirty percent is the low reasonable. So what, as a board, flexibility, what levers do they have to pull to work towards slowing down the expenses? As I said the night that the board passed the reserve budget, I got up and told the board or said to the board, you do not have to spend all of that money. That's, well, I think the this, thing that's, 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 that's a manager's responsibility. And I'm looking at the board to be a management group. Right. I, you know, I'll, I'll just say a couple of things. One is that I, I think the idea that slowing down the expenses, and I think Will asked this at Browning, whether that would help with funding the reserves, you know, or help the percent funded and, and so forth. And um, 
Will, do you want to mention the problem? This is the problem. Uh, if if you actually have by some means discover that the useful life of a pro let me use the example of the the roofs because uh, finance committee actually did this several years ago we looked at the roofs and we said hey the roofs are uh, the estimation on the useful life of the roofs appears to be too short you know it's it's five years at least too short so. If that turns, if that's actually true, the useful life is actually longer than it was estimated in the reserve. Because remember, the reserve study is nothing but a, it, it's it's a group of projections. Understand? Okay. So suddenly you figure out that that roof's going to last ten years longer than we projected. Then you're going to have a significant impact either on the amount you have to contribute. Or, because remember, these are in balance, the amount you have to contribute or uh, the percent fund. On the other hand, for instance, let's say you have, a, let's say we took the next phase of this project and it doesn't fall nicely into years, but let's, uh, for sake of argument, let's just simply say we planned that it was going to start and be finished in one year. And we decided, no, we're not going to do it in one year. We're going to do it in two years. So we're going to stretch this expenditure out over two years. Asking, you know, the problem is the unfunded, the, the parts of the, the work that haven't been done are still a liability. So you've decreased your expenditures, but you haven't decreased your liabilities. And uh, running it past Browning, that you know, is this going to increase your percent funded? He said you might get a boost, a small boost, the first year, and then it's going to disappear. The problem is you actually have to have something that isn't going to cost you, you know, isn't going to cost you money, um, because if it's if it's left undone and it's in the reserve study, it's a, it's it's a future liability, and therefore it's reducing your percent funded because it's something that still has to be funded. The percent funded is an actual calculation of dollars. The percent funded is what purport, if, if you had to fix everything today, how much, what percentage of that money do you have in the bank? The percent funded that has been I guess for this year is going to be 48%, correct? Uh, Lower than that. Well, here's the thing though. I don't want us to get too lost in this because it is, it's complex. It's a complex calculation. It's not just how much is everything worth and, and how much is in the bank right now. It, mm -hmm. it also has a lot to do with um, mm -hmm. this useful life. And, in, and that's why we keep kind of going on about let's try and find some research that shows that this new siding that we're using is going to last longer than the T111 because that will help the calculations for our percent funded and how much we actually have to spend on repairs down the line. It all kind of comes together that way. Well, those, those, number, those numbers for things is, have been batted back and forth before. I've sat and listened long enough now uh, here that uh, we'll all we'll move that from six years to eight years, or we'll pull that in from eight to seven years and stuff. So there's there's gyrations going on in order to work out the uh, reserve budget, and right. that 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 forty eight percent or forty two percent or whatever it is, I believe, is in the uh, reserve budget this year in the forecast that's one or two or three pages later uh, takes it down in 2025, six, and I think seven into the 30% 30, 30 funded. I'm only talking about the cash management of that budget. And that's a one year, two year, maybe three year thing. And I understand how the reserve, why it's called a reserve, because you're putting in this year as a reserve for five years or 10 years down the road. But you've still got a responsibility to 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 manage the current budget. 
Well, and well here's when, the other when, thing. And when, other... We, when, when we run over 100 plus percent on a major project, we have to take some action. We just can't be pedal to the metal and going down that road. We've got I, some decisions to make. Uh, under, totally understood, Don. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. You know, nobody here is going to argue. But here, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, we're all about let's find ways to save money, right? I mean, let's look at this stuff. Let's figure out ways to. Uh, that's what we're looking at. How much are we spending on things, and how are there? How can we meet the responsibilities we have to the homeowners? And here's the thing. The other thing I wanted to say that I want you to really keep in mind is that our duty is to the homeowners to keep things looking good and in good repair. So if we say, well, we're just gonna slow down this project and just have, you know, one truckload of guys out here working, you know, even though people have got black X's all over their houses, then I'm not sure that that really is doing our, serving the, the homeowners very I well. I haven't suggested to stop anything. I've only well, no, but it's this. I'm just. I'm being. Yeah, I'm. I'm being a little like taking things to, uh, <laughs> like hyperbolizing, taking things to an extreme level just to make a point. So, you know, pardon me. I'm not insinuating that that you said that. I'm just trying to illustrate a point. Stretch, stretching, stretching the. Once we start the project, stretching the project out is not going to help us percent fund. You're, you're, you're managing by twisting a different knob than what you're dealing with. The the you know if you could if you could eliminate some liabilities, uh, for instance, if you could uh, somehow eliminate a swimming pool that you have to repair in the future or. Uh, you know, some obligation that you have, then you, you affect uh, percent funded. If you increase the amount of input uh, to the reserve study, you increase the percent funded. And in fact, Browning said he would, I don't know if he will, said, I asked him, I said, run the figures for 60%. Uh, you know, what would, it, what, what would the contributions be given your current projections of cost if we wanted to maintain a bare minimum of 60% funded. Now, I don't know if he'll run those for us or not, but it would be interesting to see um, how much that is. Well, Dusty did come back uh, with an answer to that question that I posed to the board. So it's in the uh, board uh, notes someplace. Now, didn't she say we'd have to add something like $3 million to- exactly. Her number was- she went after the 65% and for that it was uh, 3 million and something. Yes. So, and you know, what, what I heard you saying was we need to find ways to take that off of what we need to spend every year. Not that we needed to each contribute enough to, you know, put in 3 million. No, and I, and I, I just said, you know, that, that was the point. I'm not suggesting that we have to make 60%, but it's a management tool. If we're going to go to 42%, maybe, all right, here's a, here's a couple things that we can do to push out or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we get 50% rather than 42%. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's what I consider to be management that the board makes. Well, so, it, with threshold funding, we haven't paid so much attention to percent funded. Um, we really look at, we play out the reserve projections, as I was saying, over the years. And you can, I think you can find a graph on, I can't remember, you know, I have no idea what page it's on, but it's like a bar graph and it'll show you the year that we have the most expenses and there's something more than $5,000 expected to be $5,000, $5 million expected to be in our reserve funds that year. And so everything that you calculate is, is trying to make sure that there is at least $5 million in the account on that really heavy duty expense year. 
And that's, and so that's what you're paying attention to. And you expect that in those years where you have greater expenses and especially leading up to them, that you're not, your percent funded is, is not going to look as good. I mean, that's just the way it is when you have to replace roofs, you're going to be spending a lot of money painting and siding. You're going to have to spend a lot of money. But um, the, uh, the number for Browning after in 2025 and six, as I mentioned earlier, is continues that fall into the 30s. And, and it does. And I mean, it should kind of bounce back up again after we finish painting and siding because the the expected life goes back up to 100 percent for painting and siding, which is a heavy blow financially. And we start um, increasing the uh, contributions into the reserve funds. But that's that's the, there's a point there that the uh, if the cost of doing the work was what was budgeted, we probably wouldn't have this conversation. But since the overrun has been so great, that leads us strongly into the conversation we're having. That's exactly where the problem was. Browning, Browning clearly underestimated uh, the cost. Yeah. So now, we, now, I, we have, now we have to work to yeah, live with out. Had he properly estimated it, uh, and and I don't know that that it was avoidable. It may well be that uh, I mean, talking to the consultant, uh, most of the the high cost that they've had has has been a result of water intrusion. Um, we've done a lot of renovation to to try to get water off of fences and homes and and so on. But uh, we've had termites, and and we've really been killed on fences. But um, you know, it, if he had done a, if he had done it properly, or if he'd have been done, let's say accurately, because I don't know if he may, if it was his mistake or not. But let's, had he been more accurate, uh, what would have happened is that we would have been hit with a far larger assessment than we were, because of, or a somewhat larger assessment, because we'd have had to make a substantially larger commitment to. Uh, yeah. Uh, serve contributions. Okay. So, one one more question, and I'll get off of this. Uh, th this is the first time. Well, two questions. This is the first time we're going through this siding thing in forty years. Is that correct? Oh my gosh, no. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. As I asked that question, I, I said, oh, "Okay, I've got the answer." Nina, I don't know whether you have broken down the numbers and stuff for first level, ground level versus upper level and single stories of no, that. We didn't do that. No. Too. Mm -hmm. but no, the no. installation and and you can talk to Paul, I guess. Uh, I've talked to Mike, their uh, crew leader. The installation of the upper level siding was done incorrectly. They set that upper level siding, they set it down on the flashing. That's incorrect. And so we've got a lot of second level or upper level work that's being done because it was installed improperly before. Well, so there's another we thing. There's another influence here. You know, there's a lot of influences with the siding. It's the water on the ground. It's the water that was sprinkled. It's the water... When you have a plugged downspout, that caused enormous damage that we were, um, that was visible as we walked around. So the flashing is also another piece. So there's a lot of different factors in it. We just counted it as well, I, the house. Yeah. I'm not criticizing the work that you've done, Nita. No, no, no. I know you're not. That upper level thing was uh, when we moved in, I said, they built this wrong. They've done this wrong. Because they, you know, my, they, they never experience. really, they never really did any kind of um, data capture about you know, the process of, of doing these siding. I mean, what Nina and, and Al are doing now is, is going to be so great for the future because it'll give us information that yeah. we just never have before. And well, we were just completely dependent on, on Browning. I mean, he was the guy that 
was doing his making his best estimate, but he couldn't he couldn't uh, work out downspouts. Oh, no, no, no question. Yeah. In, in if, the if, last... you look at, if you look at the work that's done, you'll see a gap between the flashing and the upper level siding. In the last cycle, we did not have a project manager. Uh, our our in-house uh, handyman was the one that verified the, you know, had to go out and verify every sheet that was replaced, you know, when they said it needed to be replaced. But, uh, and in the project, in the cycle before that, there was a project manager, but there were some, uh, there were some problems with that particular project manager. So uh, this one seems to be, unless I'm being conned, and that's entirely possible, uh, this guy seems to be doing a very credible job. Uh, I, yeah. and, and so, you know, we may see that, that we get hit harder this time and, and a lot less hard next time simply because both uh, changing product and also the fact that the project manager is on the, on the project more than anybody has been in the past. You know, you need the expertise Stop and it. time present. Stop it. <laughs> Tara, you're, are you oh, yelling I'm, dogs? I, I'm sorry. I was, <laughs> that was awkward. That was, <laughs> I know, it's kind of appropriate. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no worries. No apology required. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, thanks. I, I think this is a good conversation and, um, you know, I, I, we probably needed to have had it a couple of months ago, but you know, I there just we have go. one thing to say about the percent funded. Cause I keep bringing it up. So I, I, sure. I really just want to put out there. I understand this is going to fluctuate and I know you're going to have heavy hitting years and I know you're going to have a top and a bottom cycle. And those aren't the things that bother me so much. What bothers me is that when we go over our projected costs that year, and, and I don't care what we want to call it, whether it's a budget or a projection, I I personally think we should we should have a reserve budget every year. But um, when we do that and we go over it, like I think I'm just going to use my own number because I calculated it um, probably on different documents than Bill did. And we talked about that, that we know that you can get different numbers by doing that. But nonetheless, um, let's say it was $600,000. There so were 600,000 plus over. And we're, we're saying, okay, let's, you know, that that gets pushed out over 30 years, but it also affects in the moment, the percent funded and the percent funded then is lower than what we, we probably should be. And if we keep doing that, we're gonna hit that lower threshold earlier than we should. That's my concern about that, not paying attention to that number. And even it's a secondary piece of data, but I think it's an important one to watch. It's an industry standard number. And when you sell your house or buy a house here, it matters. So I, I, that's my take on, on that little percent funded issue. <laughs> All right. Okie doke. Um, well, I think, you know, it's, it's always good to pay attention to overruns and, um, you know, we'll, we'll feel, we'll feel that difference. We feel the difference when we add anything to the reserves, um, any big project, we're going to feel that if we have to do anything for the water, which is why I was like being a pest about that. Um, but yeah, so Good points. Um, the budget forum, Tara, are you in a place where you think you can kind of set a date or shall we wait another month or so? I mean, I, I know you're still in the middle of Aggie Enterprise. Yeah, um, if it's possible to push out for another month, unless there's another individual that would welcome um, doing that, I can absolutely provide the slides, but I just lack the capacity right now in updating um, and providing what would be a meaningful um, presentation. No, I mean, I was thinking it would be somewhere like in August or something like that, but. That uh, that, that would be preferable. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, we'll just come back to it next Thank month. You. There's no urgency. Thank um, you. January financials. Nicole, do you, do you want to say anything about the financials? Yeah. So um, we got the January 2024 financials. Um, and, and the big component that I was looking at actually had to do with reserves. Um, and what caught my eye immediately is that um, reserves were not funded for January 2024. Um, due to the operating expenses going under a threshold. So you have to maintain being able to have your monthly expenses every month. And if you fall under that threshold of what you budgeted every month, um, your reserves will not pull out because um, of a safety net. They want you to pay up, pay the electricity and keep the lights on before you start funding reserves. Um, so I'm working with uh, the GL uh, staff that we have um, to see how we can kind of finagle that to make sure that the reserves are funded for January. Um, so I'm currently going back actually in all of the operating expenses for 2023 um, and making sure that there was nothing missed there. There was nothing that was paid out of operating that should have been to reserves. Um, I know that the, the property switched hands mid last year. So things can happen, right? We're human. So I'm going through 2023 and just making sure that we didn't miss any reserve items in there that could raise our operating balance. Um, but I'm working with them to fund the reserves for January in the coming months. So we'll get that money back in the reserves. That was kind of the big highlight that I noticed. Okay. I know when that happened um, a couple of years ago, it took until about May. Yeah. To... Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we ha don't have, you know, more than, you know, three or so months that will pass without funding that again. Um, but that is on my top action list to make sure that, that gets funded. Okay. I hate when reserves are not funded properly. <laughs> we miss it. So it's a priority to me. Absolutely. Does anybody have any questions about the financials? I've got one for Bill. Uh, yep. I know you can't get into any detail because it's confidential, but is the board aggressively staying on unpaid assessments yes because in some past boards sometimes have let that drift and i i don't see the big numbers in there but uh it can get out of control very rapidly yeah the we 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 go through uh monthly and, and we're taking appropriate actions uh to uh make sure that our our collections are appropriate. I, think I was on the only board that ever took somebody's house away from them. But, uh, well, I, 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 I'll, I'll say that, uh, you know, those types of actions uh, and initiatives, uh, when warranted, are being taken. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? And I think we're going to have a reserve tracker next month. Nicole has got a really great draft. I think we just need a couple of, I know it's going to be such a blessing. I got, and I got your notes. I just didn't get it. I wasn't able to make all the changes in time for the finance meeting, um, but I'm hopeful to make all the changes by the end of this week. So I'm hoping we'll, our reserve tracker will be done by the end of this week. Great. Um, Thank you, Nicole. Of course, happy to. Anything else? How about next meeting? Does March 25th look good for everybody? Okay. All right, March 25th, 4.30. I'd still like to have it in person well i would love to see you too in person don but duty calls <laughs> but well, we should I do think, something in I, the, suggested, in the... I suggested like the board meeting we could move it later in the day oh i don't know um i just want to keep it out there as a envision yeah 
Well, thanks for, for the nudge. Well, um, if nobody has anything else. I have a comment. Oh, okay, sure. Is this who is this Carol? Yes, it is. I, you just look like some beautiful place in, I don't know, south of France, Spain. <laughs> so I'm wondering of the availability of the reserve tracker when it's ready. Um, will it be put on the website? That's a great question, Carol. Um, I'm going to look to Bill because that's a, it's a board document that we get. What is that? Do you know the answer to that bill or do we need to get back to Carol on that? I think we need to get back to Carol on that. I think first of all, let's get the, let's get the tracker done and let's see what we have. And I would like to have the finance committee look at it and make recommendations to the board. I mean, just saying this out loud to all of us, it's just, it's information that's in the financials. So it shouldn't be really, you know, there's nothing really protected about the fin financials go out to the, to the community. I mean, it might be a great tool for anybody to have, but we it do have to make it's sure been it's, it's been available historically to the community. I well, don't, I, I don't know. So. I don't I don't see any issue with it being available um because like Susan was saying it, it's basically just a more broken down of the financials um kind of just more explained I don't see any issue with it uh, but I do think it would need to be formatted in a way that kind of would make sense to everybody else too um but maybe that's something where we develop maybe a homeowner copy that kind of comes with a little more explanation so it's not just random numbers because they'll see a number and have no idea what that means yeah, exactly. Um, that's, so that's, I, that's I, 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 would, I don't, I don't know if this specific tracker would be um, great for the rest of the community, but I'm not opposed to creating maybe like a membership reserve tracker. I, I think that one of the concerns in the homeowners is that um, when we get different copies of it, different numbers start showing up, and there's a different understanding. And I think there are a lot of homeowners who understand the reserve tracker and don't need to be spoon fed and i think it's something that belongs to the homeowners yeah i'll definitely i'll um i'll talk with bill and maybe we can we'll figure something out i appreciate that yeah sounds good thank you carol okay everybody well thank you so much for your time and um thank you journey at 5 47 one more question. Oh. oh, sorry. I was on mute. <laughs> oh, sorry. So you want me to go forward with the uh, tracker? How do we work with this? Did we call Paul to get the rest of the information? Will he left? I'll call him. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should. I think it's going to be a great resource, Nina. Okay. I love it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyway, okay All right. Bye. bye, everybody.